Hi everyone, my name is Paul and this is Adventure 365, the channel that's going places. On this episode, we're going to be fitting this awesome switch assembly. This was given to me by Neil and Steph from Forby. It's awesome. It's going to make the rest of the wiring in the truck so much easier. I can't tell you how easy this is to actually put in. Um, let me bring the camera in, let you have a proper look at it. Like I was saying, this is an awesome piece of kit. Uh, there you go. Forby co.uk go and check them out and just if you forgot there you go right this is such an easy system to put in you've got a, a main controller like a buzz board that you can put your power to you've got a switch controller that's all your power coming off your battery and this is like all the stuff you can run you don't have to just run lights off it you can run anything you want and that's really as complicated as the wiring gets to this. The kit comes with uh, some power leads. These are at 80 amp. I think they're 80 amp. I think they'll be uh, 10 mil square cable. Yeah, 10 mil square cable. Comes in the in the box. It's really well packed as well. You get an 80 amp breaker, that's going in the battery box. Again, really nice piece of kit. We used these before, they're really good. You get a mounting bracket and the hardware. You get the wires to wire it all up. So there's all, all the wiring you need. This goes from the control unit, which is there, uh, to the to the switch or the switch panel, which is here. Actually, that might be an accessory one because the the switch panel's got its own wiring, so that'll be an accessory switch. There's the control panel, so you can have eight individual functions, and you can turn it all on and off. Oh, this is really difficult to get out of the box. There we go, and there's the switch panel. I'm just saying, there's a load more stuff underneath as well. There you go. Oh, I'll throw that on the floor. So there's all the the um, I don't know what you call those. They're called something, aren't they? Um, switch identificators. That's what I'm going to call them, because I don't actually know what they're called. So you've got like heated driver's seat, fog lights, side lights. So you can pretty much wire anything you want up to it. Rear light bar, fog lights, radio, all sorts of things. And literally we are going to wire all different things to it. That is the switch block. Load of zip ties in there, which is always good. There's, there's the bracket for mounting, I'm assuming, that to... Yeah, that'll be for that, won't it? So we can mount, mount that to that. Yeah, that's going to be for that. There's another bracket. Again, we'll work out what all these are for. And that'll be for something else. I've just moved the box out of the way just so we can see what's inside this. This is really the heart and soul of the entire unit. It's also really nicely made. There's a lot of aluminium in this, which is what you want because you want it to act as a heat sink. Screwed. And that's what you've got inside it. So it's dead simple. You've got two cables that come in. You've got your live and your uh, neutral that come in there. 
your switch panel what goes onto there and somewhere on the wiring tells me what that other uh, three plug cable does I'll have a quick squiz up on that in a minute and then you've got 30 amp 20 amp 10 amp and 5 amp and you've got two of each and literally live and neutral live and neutral live and neutral and that's all you do you put this in once this is wired to your fuse box you've got all your all your wiring just goes to this so I'm literally going to put me I think I'm going to put me I'm putting a 12 volt oven in so I'm going to run an oven to that 30 amp uh, I've got my fridge going in so I'm going to run my fridge to it so I can control it all off this panel I've got my interior lights I'm going to run off uh, like the smaller ones and there's loads of little things like my night heater I can run my night heater off it as well so I don't need to keep running backwards and forwards to the uh, uh, few, uh, to the battery box so this is where all my switches are going to be and when I want to turn it all off I can isolate the whole thing from the control panel Hang up. So, like when we've finished a trip and we want to pack everything up, hit the middle button, turns everything off. And that's as complicated as this gets. This is going to be awesome. So let's get it fitted. We're back in the battery box. I seem to spend my life in here. Uh, I'm just trying to work out where to put this breaker. Um, now, the reason I didn't put that relay uh, where this is, is because of uh, lifting the battery in and out. So, but... I think it's actually the only place I can put it, so I think it's have to go. It's going to have to go there. So uh, yeah, I think I'll still be able to get the battery out. I don't think there'll be an issue. So yeah, that's definitely going there. Right, I'll get the batteries out, drill a couple of holes, screw that in. That was easy. The kit comes with self-drilling screws. So I'll just watch it. Put the two screws in. Put that in place. That's it. I can now wire that up to the battery. And then we'll move on to putting the cables in the back. I've got that in now. Wire wiring slow going. So that's all in. Uh, I've bought a single live off it. And the earth runs to a factory earth underneath. So, right, let's move off into the back of the truck. I've got my two cables coming up from the battery. And they're way too long. Uh, they're about four, four metres too long. But I ordered extra just in case. Um, my diesel heater's in by the way, I've fastened, I've fastened it in place and that's, that's the wiring for the diesel heater. And like I said, I'm going to take the power supply from this control unit to run the diesel heater. So what I'm thinking of doing is putting that bracket in there. Now the bracket's a bit too long, I'm going to crop these little feet off so that I can push it closer up to the side. So take these little feet off, just sink that off up there. Now I can push that in and mount the control box like that, run the cables in behind, and then all my cables will come up here and then off to where they need to go in the vehicle, to lights, uh, fridge, all sorts of things. I'm pretty sure I can run the fridge off this, I don't see there being an issue, but if not, I can always run a um, permanent feed into one of the batteries for the fridge but everything else is coming off this control unit so I'm just going to cut the feet off this I'll get those feet cut off and we can get that fastened in which I don't know how I'm going to fasten that in I think it's probably going to have to be a couple of riv nuts eh. yeah we'll see brackets all bolted in uh, I got a handy assistant to come and help me, you know, Karen. So I've put that in there. So I've just got to work out that goes that way up. So I've just got to fasten that on. The bolts come with this, uh, so that can go in there. Then we can tuck all the cables in behind and start powering everything up. I've snipped, I've snipped them off to a decent length. I've snipped them off so that they'll reach down into the control. I've just got to put a couple of tail, uh, a couple of ends on them tails, uh, and cut that one down. I can actually remove the fuse off that as well because the these are fused. The earth's already uh, quite short, and that's for the controller. Yeah, that one plugs into the controller, so we need that to be full length because that will go somewhere else in the vehicle. That'll probably go up here and out to shot somewhere. So that 
it's pretty much that unit in and I've just got to find out what all the other bits do. I've had a look what these wires do. Uh, that's a power for the switch. Uh, it actually turns the controller on. Hang on, which order are these in? One of these does, um, it lights up the controller. So if you wire it into your, your lights uh, on, your, on your dashboard, uh, the controller will light up. This is all for if you're running the switch on your dashboard as a controller. Uh, and I'm not, so I don't need... Uh, I'm trying to think what that one does. That's um, Basically, they're all accessories for doing... This. One's an ignition live, one's lights. Uh, oh, dimming. That's it. That dims... Uh, you wire that in so it will dim this, the, the lights on the control panel. It's got three settings. Don't need that either. So the only one I'm going to wire in is a live that powers the panel. And once the panel's powered, uh, you can turn it on and off from the switch. It doesn't recommend that you wire it directly to the battery. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to wire it, hardwire it in. And that's going to sort it all out. Uh, that'll give me the power to the, the switches. And I don't need those two. I don't need it to be on an accessory live. So, uh, yeah. Let's wire this in. I didn't record any of the wiring of this. Uh, it's only three cables and we've done enough wiring. So what I've done is I've not used the white and I've not used the yellow. I've tucked them in this, into this piece of heat sleeving. I've cut the cable down as well so I could hide it in the box. And I've just powered the red to the incoming feed. Now, like I said, it doesn't recommend you do that, but I've done it anyway and it all works. I can isolate it from the 80 amp breaker in the battery box. So uh, it works for me, that's how I've wired it, and it's great. Now, I've put in um, the power for the diesel heater, which is here. Um, that powers up, that lights up. We've got to test fire that in a minute. And I've just got in, that's a, a small feed for, I'm just trying to think what it is, USB. I've got a USB cable, I'm putting an external USB. So a waterproof USB plug on the outside of the truck for awning lights. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a really sore throat today and, and it's getting worse. And uh, yeah, what was I saying? That, that's, that's it, it's wired up. So I can just add in the things I want now. So as I, as I wire them in, um, like I said, uh, oven, if I, the one thing I don't think I'm gonna power in is the fridge. I don't think I'm going to put my fridge on here. I think I'm going to hardwire it um, for the simple reason the fridge runs all the time and I want to be able to turn this off. So I think I'm just going to put a hard cable in for the fridge. I've got another big cable coming down here, if you have noticed. That's for my solar panels. That's going to the battery uh, and then up to a solar controller. So we're definitely getting there with the wiring. Like I said, now we're going to test this diesel heater, see if we can get it fired up. Um, I don't see why it won't fire, it's all powered up now, there's diesel to it, pumps in, everything, that should fire. So let's test fire the diesel heater. Uh, we're just test firing the diesel heater guys, and it's just done a full refusal on us. Yeah. It's going back to its cool down cycle. Which hasn't thrown an error code. It's still smoking. I don't know what's vibrating though. Just have a squiz underneath. Yeah. I think he's going to fire you this time. Oh, that's fine. That's fired up. Yeah, that's running. I think it was just having a bit of post-ignition problems with it being fresh. 
Yeah, because it went straight. He didn't throw an error, it just... Uh... The diesel heater works, guys. Second firing, not bad. Oh yeah, we got heat now. Oh, that's full overdrive. I've escaped from the wiring in the back for a bit, so I'm going to start putting this insulation on. Now this insulation we're using, you've probably seen it on the doors already. It's closed cell phone neoprene and it's self-adhesive uh, with a reflective surface, so it reflects the heat back into the truck. It's waterproof, uh, it doesn't absorb moisture, it's brilliant. I've used this stuff for years, I've put it in loads of vans. And we find that not only is it good at insulating, it also kills the sound. It's, it's sound deadening mat as well. Because with it being neoprene, it's not very thick, but if we ever need to double it up, you can just stick another layer over the top. So any areas that we think should be have more insulation in, we actually put two layers of it on and double it up. But I don't think we're going to need to do that in barrel. I think it should be fine. With the size of the diesel heater I've put in, I think she'll definitely be fine. But in uh, hot climates, it reflects the heat back out. So it'll go through the panel, it'll hit it and come back out. So it stops the truck getting red hot as well. So we're going to put this on. I've got Karen behind the camera and she's going to help me cut this. So I'll measure the pieces. She's just going to cut it and we're going to stick it on. It doesn't take long either. That's the beauty of it. It does not take long to put on. But what's it? once it is on, it's a pain to remove because I've had to take it off before now. You leave it on overnight, this glue sets and you ain't getting it off. It comes off in little pieces. You'll peel the silver foil off, be left with the neoprene. So wherever you're putting it, make sure that you've decided that's where it's staying. But right, that's enough of me talking, let's get some work done. Been busy. I've got uh, quite a lot of the insulating done. It's a bit like wallpapering, but slightly more difficult. I'm getting there. I've got uh, probably a quarter of a roll left, so I think I'm going to have to order some more. 16 by just over 19. So do it 19. Yeah. Wiring, plumbing. Wiring. Yep, same size. What size? Yeah. Not wasting it, not this price. most exciting job in the world putting insulation in but we're definitely getting there we're going to order another roll probably another 10 square meters uh, a double this up in well we'll, we'll finish off the bits uh, there 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 and above the door and then whatever's left we'll just double it up we'll go over the top of what's already there all helps with the soundproofing and the insulation. Diesel heater works. And the switch assembly works. That's brilliant, that switch assembly. Uh, that's going to make such a difference to wiring everything in. So we're definitely getting there. I want to say a big thanks to Vandalised for shipping me this out overnight. I ran out of insulation, guys. 
Uh, it was really good of them to send it overnight because I messed up my order. Uh, I ordered the wrong colour carpet and they were out of stock of this foil backed insulation. Uh, they went and found me this in the warehouse. Uh, they sent me this and I've sent them the other order back. So really good of them. If you want a good company that's going to treat you right, go and see these guys. If you, especially if you're doing a van or a truck or whatever, go and get your stuff off them. I finally finished all the insulation. That was a job. There's a lot of little cuts in here. Uh, let me put this light on for you, see if that helps. Uh, there you go. My camera light's died, so I'm having to use this uh, handheld. But, man, that makes a difference. And I've run all the cables in. So I've got my lighting cables in, uh, over here, down lighters. I've got the main cable in for the overhead lights. Oven cables in, uh, rear door lights in. I'll show you that that actually works. So I've wired it all to the fuse box down there to the controller, and it's all on the control panel. Turn that off. Let me just show you. There's the control panel. You see that? Yeah, that's in shot. Uh, and that's the overhead light coming on above you. I'll uh, pull the camera back and let you see it. But man, so I've got. Everything is now wired up. That's brilliant. What a difference a day makes, eh? I'm really chuffed with all of that. Let me show you this light working. That is the only camera angle I can get. <laughs> it's not very good. Let me go and put this light on. I will be coming past the camera. That's cool. Wow. We're getting there. Oh, I am so chuffed. I can't tell you. It's brilliant. We are so close. Literally, I'm going through the list of stuff we've got to do and everything's like just been ticked off the list. Awnings, awning lights. Tomorrow I'll get some more stuff done. There's uh, more wiring, unfortunately. That just takes forever. But we are getting there. I literally think there's probably a couple of weeks and this will be out of the workshop. There's so little left to do. Right guys, before I go, I want to say thank you to all the new subscribers. Uh, it's great, the channel's growing brilliantly. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. We've got loads of new things coming, you know, new projects, new trips, loads of things. So make sure you're subscribed and I will see you on the next one.